I'm a clinical geneticist and uh, that means I trained as a paediatrician and then trained as a clinical geneticist and I have uh, a long-standing interest in genetic screening. So I'm very interested in how we can make genetics relevant to the masses, to people who don't have a family member with a particular genetic condition, but we can use that to improve people's health. And so I became very interested in hemochromatosis because uh, 95 plus percent of Australians who have the condition have one genetic fault. So it's very easy to identify most people who are at risk. And hemochromatosis is completely preventable. And so I had a, a, a long-standing interest in how we could screen for hemochromatosis and then became interested in how to treat it. So amongst those of European background, about one in 200 have the genetic predisposition. If you're from Ireland, that can be as high as one in 150. So it is uh, the most common uh, recessive genetic condition in people from European ancestry. If I had my way, every person would be offered screening for it. We can screen people with a, a simple cheek swab, uh, test for the genetic predisposition. We know that uh, most men and a high percentage of women who have the genetic predisposition will develop high iron levels in the body uh, and some of those, if not treated, can have cirrhosis of the liver, they can have damage to the heart, diabetes, and these things can be prevented if we keep the iron levels in the normal range, which is incredibly simple by becoming a blood donor. The blood can be used for donation uh, if there's no other contraindication. Uh, so that's how I would do it if I uh, was Prime Minister. Sadly, I'm not. So therefore, uh, you know, we have to take a pragmatic view and I think the message is to have a very low threshold for doctors, to have a very low threshold to test for hemochromatosis. Uh, so one of the most common symptoms is fatigue. Uh, one of the common causes of fatigue is anemia. There was a study in the 1990s that showed that 17% of people with hemochromatosis had been given iron because of fatigue, which as you can imagine is a very bad idea. So if people come in with symptoms like fatigue, like uh, arthritis in the hands, then uh, measure the serum ferritin level. You might say, why not measure the iron? The iron levels that you measure in blood are normal, and there's this marker called ferritin that gives a clue that it's uh, high iron levels, and another marker called transferrin saturation. If those are measured, then you'll pick up people uh, who have symptomatic hemochromatosis, get on to treatment before they develop irreversible symptoms like liver cirrhosis. If again we go from the dream world to the real world, the dream world would be young adults, that uh, people rarely, rarely run into any major problems before uh, middle age. So if we tested people uh, late teens, early 20s, then uh, we'd pick people up in time before they developed irreversible damage from the condition. Uh, but uh, given that there's not a government funded screening program yet, but we haven't given up on that, then uh, it's really anyone who comes in. And you know, doctors will often do iron studies as a part of a general health check. Uh, and that's uh, a good way of picking people up who have raised iron, but not into the very dangerous levels that cause damage to liver, heart, etc. But my main interest in hemochromatosis has been really around screening for it. And the reason why I'm so interested in it is because you can't prevent a person having the genetic predisposition. But if you've got the genetic predisposition, you can prevent illness. And that's because most of the symptoms and most of the disease happens because of this buildup of iron in the liver causing cirrhosis, in the heart causing cardiomyopathy, in the pancreas causing diabetes. And so if we can keep the iron levels in the normal range, which can be done very simply by donating blood, then you can prevent those things happening. And that's why it's such an attractive condition for treatment. We see people who 
have been diagnosed and then we do what's called cascade testing, which means testing family members, brothers, sisters. You know, even though it's a recessive condition, meaning both parents have to have the faulty gene, it's so common that we see quite a lot of families where multiple generations are affected. So usually in recessive conditions, it would affect SIB ships, but not other generations. But because one in 10 people are carriers of a single faulty gene, it's very common that multiple generations are affected. So if we find someone with it, the recommendation is family members should be tested. Uh, very simple to check whether they've got the genetic predisposition. If they do, monitor the iron levels and make sure they never get too high. I mean, it's such an incredibly variable condition. So, you know, at one end of the spectrum, you've got a person who's got the genetic predisposition with normal iron levels and they're no different to anyone else. Right through to people who aren't picked up until they get uh, you know, such high iron levels that they get irreversible liver cirrhosis, they need a liver transplant and, and some people die because of it. So you know, it's not one size fits all, but certainly some of the more uh, non-specific symptoms like uh, fatigue, uh, like depression, you know, these can respond to treatment with uh, reducing the iron levels into the normal range and so that's uh, our aim is to find people and, and let them benefit from it. Look I think that uh, the general public, I think most people are not aware of haemochromatosis but I think the medical profession is becoming more aware. 30 years ago I think there was less recognition but since the gene's been discovered people recognise the way it can be easily diagnosed and that it's a preventable and treatable condition that the medical profession is testing for it more and is more aware. But I think there's room for improvement and that uh, there's an attitude for, among some that it's too rare, I'll never see it, but one in 200 means every GP uh, will knowingly or unknowingly see people with haemochromatosis in their career. You know, I mentioned earlier this serum ferritin, and serum ferritin uh, goes up when iron levels in the body go up, but it also goes up for other reasons. Uh, if you've got uh, an infection, it can go up. If you've got cancer, it can go up. If you've got an immune disorder, it can go up. And so it's quite true that uh, there have been people wrongly labelled with haemochromatosis when there's another cause for it. And that's why you know it's very important to do the genetic testing to uh, make sure that's the right diagnosis because uh, giving blood when you've got cancer is not the right treatment. So I think a very important uh, study that we did was to assess whether people who have what we deemed moderate iron overload needed to be treated. So if you have the genetic predisposition, you've got normal iron levels, obviously you don't need treatment, although we recommend that those people consider being blood donors to make sure it doesn't go up. If you've got a very high ferritin level, so we consider that a level of 1,000 or more, no one would disagree. You need treatment to prevent uh, risk of severe disease. We did a study where we uh, had people with moderate iron overload between the upper limit of normal ferritin up to 1,000, and half of them had their iron levels reduced and half didn't. And we didn't let them know if they were going to be reduced. And you might say, how do you possibly do that? And the way we did it is we used what's called an apheresis machine and we put it literally behind a black curtain so their blood went into this machine. For half the people, they had their red blood cells returned, meaning their iron levels weren't reduced. And the other half, we kept their red blood cells but we took their, put their plasma back and so they didn't know whether they were treated or not. And we found that the people who were treated did better than the people who weren't treated. They felt better, they had less fatigue, they had uh, improvement in various biochemical markers. And so that study has told us that if you've got high iron levels, no matter how minimally raised they are, we recommend now everyone should be treated, whether it's in the very high levels or just raised, that everyone with hemochromatosis and raised iron levels should be treated. Well, you know, I think uh, the websites for support organisations are excellent. They're uh, written with uh, 
consultation with experts, so Hemochromatosis Australia, the American equivalent will have very good information uh, and people you know, can see their GPs to discuss testing and can have a referral uh, to a genetics unit if they want to talk in more depth about genetic testing for their family.